All right, in this lesson, we are gonna go through an example. This example specifically is about cash versus accrual income statement. So we're gonna look at transactions and under that same transaction, we're gonna see how it actually impacts the income statement from a cash versus an accrual standpoint. And remember that this course is all about the accrual method because that's the harder one. That has the rules in it. Cash is very easy, you just follow the cash. Cash comes in, that's revenue. Cash goes out, that's expense. And then we're done. Otherwise that course, if we did a cash course, we'd be done like two sections ago, okay? so. Because we're not in that type of a class, we got to know the difference between cash and accrual. So let's get started here. Polar Pop Inc. had the following transactions during the month of January. The first one is, is that they sold $22,000 in tickets to a music event scheduled for the end of the month. They collected $9,000 in cash and the rest on account. They received a bill for advertising expense in the amount of $800 that will be paid in February. Number three, paid for consulting services or consulting expenses for the month in the amount of $450. And number four, sold $12,000, which was paid in cash and t-shirts uh, for their upcoming event. All shirts were delivered to the customers at the time of the sale. Prepare the income statement for Polar Pop using both the cash basis and the accrual basis. So we've got four transactions in here and the key here is we gotta walk through each one of them and see, okay, how would we treat this under a cash method versus how would we treat them and from an accrual method. So let's take a look at the first one. We sold $22,000 of tickets. So $22,000 of tickets to a music event for the end of the month. They collected 9,000 cash and the rest on account. So we gotta look at this from the accrual standpoint and we gotta look at it from the cash basis. So the cash basis says that once we receive cash, it's revenue. On the accrual basis, we actually have to perform the service or deliver the goods before we can consider that revenue, okay? So for a cash basis, how much cash did we collect? Well, we did collect some cash. In this case, we collected $9,000. Therefore, our revenues for the month would be $9,000. So I'm gonna write here $9,000. So the left side, the cash side, the right side, the accrual side. All right, so on the accrual side, the question that we're asking ourselves is, how much did we earn based on the services we provided or the goods that we delivered? Well, we haven't done anything yet, okay? because it doesn't say that we have done anything yet. So yes, the event will be held at the end of the month, but the event hasn't happened yet because it didn't say it actually happened yet. So therefore our revenue is going to be zero. So no revenues yet because we haven't performed the services, okay? All right, moving on to the second example. Uh, we received a bill for advertising expense in the amount of $800 that will be paid in February. So again, cash basis tells us that we book an expense when the cash is paid. Did we have any cash paid for advertising expense in the month of January or in this period of time? No, so therefore our advertising expense right now is going to be zero because we haven't paid for it. Under the accrual method, the moment that it has been incurred is when we book it. Have we incurred the advertising expense? Well, we were billed for it, so the assumption is yes, we incurred it, therefore we're going to book the $800 expense on the accrual side. So again, we're trying to look at the differences between cash and accrual. And in this case, the advertising expenses happen. So we need to go ahead and book it. All right, moving on to number three, we paid for consulting expenses for the month in the amount of $450. So the key word here is we paid. So because we paid cash has gone out. So from the cash basis of accounting, we can say that we've paid $450 in expenses for consulting. And then what about the accrual basis? Well, uh, paid for consulting expenses for the month. So um, assumption here is that the expense actually occurred. So therefore we need to book the expense um, on the accrual side. So in this case, both of them are the same. All right, last one here. So we sold $12,000, uh, which was paid in cash uh, for t-shirts for their upcoming event all t-shirts were delivered to the customers at the time of the sale so cash basis we look at how much cash did we receive and that's going to be our revenue in this case we received twelve thousand dollars in cash now i would write twelve thousand in the revenue but 
We also had $9,000 that we collected from ticket sales. So we're gonna add 9,000 to 12,000 and we get $21,000. So revenues was $21,000. Now what about on the accrual side? Did we earn $12,000? We indeed earned $12,000. How do we know that? Well, we delivered the shirt to the customer. So the customer now has them. Therefore, our performance obligation has been completed. Therefore, we are going to go ahead and put our revenue at $12,000 on the right side, okay? On the accrual side as well. All right, so if we were to do the math here, uh, the math would look something like this, 20,550 and then $10,750. So under the cash basis, we're gonna show a net income of $20,550. On the accrual basis, we're only gonna show an income of $10,750. Uh, when we perform the actual services uh, for that $22,000, then the right side will go to $22,000 on top of the $12,000 uh, for the t-shirt sale. So here's another look at the answer. Uh, after we've completed all of the work necessary to get the accrual and the cash basis in the right boxes. And again, in this case, the cash base income is more than it is the accrual basis. And that's fine because we treat the transactions a little differently based on the rules that we have to follow. So that is our example on the cash versus accrual income statement. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, it is Patrick. Don't forget to press the like button and share this video with someone who could get a lot of use from watching this lesson, like maybe a classmate or maybe a friend or maybe just a parent just because you wanted to share this video because you're very excited about what you saw. Share it with someone. And if you wanna help us grow and help us make sure that we put the very best in accounting topics out on YouTube, make sure you press the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time we post videos to this channel. Now, I do this with every one of my classes at the end of class. What did you learn from this lesson? Put that in the comment section below and I'll respond to you on what you got out of this video. So hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next lesson.